your forecast first. Sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Boy, it has been a windy day today and a day full of field fires as a result of dry conditions out there and these strong winds. A red flag warning still in effect here until 7 o'clock officially. And that red flag warning is, uh, you know, out there because of just how these conditions are currently set up. Essentially, you've got winds that are still gusting, uh, you know, near 30 miles an hour like they are in Champaign and Springfield at 31. You're going to just flame. Those flames can really get out of control if anything sparks and whatnot. And that's what happened today in several areas. And there are still several fires going on across the area. Now, we've had nice weather where we've not had that going on. But lots of sunshine and temperatures into the 80s. This feels great, but... We're about to flip the switch. Fall-like weather is here to stick around, it looks like, as temperatures cool off tonight. More about the fires and how long these strong winds last when we come back. WCIA 3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. A bicyclist who was hit by a semi-truck has died. What family and friends want people to remember about the man who spent his life caring for others. Many fire departments are hustling today. Several fields going up in flames. Why they are calling this a red flag. Warning day. And it was his dream to build this park, how it will become reality after his death. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. His demeanor was always one of giving and nurturing. But that generous spirit is now gone. An Urbana doctor has lost his life after a hit and run crash. A semi truck driver hit Bill Shue while he was riding on his bicycle on Sunday. He died last night. Good evening. I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. He was riding with his wife and daughter. The crash happened on Route 150 by Spring Lake Road. Police are still looking for the truck driver. WCI3's Courtney Bunting is live in our newsroom. Courtney Shue had an impact on so many lives. That's right, Jennifer, he did. I've been in touch with friends and coworkers all day, and they've all talked about what a great person he was, especially those who worked with him. She was the chief medical officer at Carl. He was also an associate professor at the College of Medicine. The 58-year-old had been with Carl for 24 years. Most people you talk to describe him as selfless, so much so that he was an organ donor. Shu's son says that's something they want people to remember about him. I talked to a nurse manager at Carl who says it's not easy to talk about, but organ donation is a great way to leave behind a legacy. It's the gift of, uh, of hope for others who are on a transplant list who um, don't have hope. And um, it's, it's the ultimate sacrifice that you can give um, when, when it seems like there's nothing left to give. She encourages people to have that conversation with their family members early and adds that it can be healing for them to see their loved ones living on. Carl officials say they extend their condolences to his family and gratitude for his service. She leaves behind three children and his wife. His wife wasn't hurt in the crash, but his daughter had some bruises and scrapes. But she's doing okay, okay now. Live in the newsroom, Courtney Bunting, WCIA3, your local news leader. And again, police still looking for the driver of that truck. All right, thank you. We have an update on the murder of a toddler last year. A man has been sentenced in her death. Anthony Myers was given 30 years for the death of two-year-old Tanaja Barnes. She was found in her Decatur home, wrapped in a urine-soaked blanket, a body temperature so low it didn't register on a thermometer. Myers was the live-in boyfriend of Barnes' mother, Twanika Davis. She is serving 20 years. A man from Rantoul is facing several charges after police say he broke into a U of I lab and caused thousands of dollars in damage. 21-year-old Chris Henson of Rantoul is charged with burglary, obstruction of justice, and trespassing. Police were called to the Roger Adams Laboratory on South Matthews after 8 Monday morning. They found Henson sleeping in an office. They say he'd also broken into several rooms and damaged lab equipment, computers, and office furniture. There was at least $8,500 in damage. A Champaign police are looking for a man who robbed a CVS. Authorities say he had a gun and when he went inside at Green and Neal last night around 9 and demanded money from an employee. He took off on a bike. He's about 6 feet tall and in his 30s. If you have any information, you're asked to call police. Firefighters were called out all over the place as fields caught on fire across central Illinois today. The weather just making it harder for them to do their jobs. WCI3's Jennifer Jensen live in Champaign County. Now, you are at 
Route 10 between Rising and Staley Roads. Jennifer, at 5, the wind was whipping. We saw your hair all over the place. Is it still as strong out there? Jennifer, yes, those winds are still very strong. You can still see that um, behind me here. And what we're looking at here, the Corn, Corn Belt Fire Chief told me that those strong winds and dry conditions posed a very difficult challenge for these firefighters today as they tried to tackle this fire. The wind carried those flames and rapidly pushed the fire further through the field as they tried to take down those flames. Several fire departments were out here today. Take a look at this video from our Sky three drone. It took about 30 minutes to put the flames out, but not before the fire burned through more than an acre of unharvested crops here. The neighbors who live right across the street from this field tell me that the smoke was so thick they could hardly see past the road in front of their house. The fire departments are tonight asking people not to burn anything like leaves or debris on their property to prevent even more fires from starting and spreading in these windy and dry conditions. Now, fire crews remain on alert tonight as they say they would not be surprised if more field fires sparked up later. So we will continue to monitor that throughout the night. Live in Champaign County, I'm Jennifer Jensen, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, Jennifer, thank you. You. Crews are working to learn why a mobile home fire caught fire or why a mobile home caught fire in Urbana. It happened near the corner of Crystal Lake Drive and Cunningham Avenue. The Urbana fire chief says it started in the kitchen, but they are still working to find out why. The fire chief says the home was destroyed and the family likely lost everything. The people and pets inside made it out okay. A new Target 3 investigation uncovered alarming evidence of an active methane leak in Livingston County. NICOR gas keeps 60 billion cubic feet of natural gas in a massive underground storage facility in Ancona. Farm families living on the land above it have filed complaints about the gas bubbling up in their wells and creeks. A former state inspector says he pressed NICOR to explain how much of that gas is making its way out of those underground storage formations. By their own admission, they don't know how much they're actually losing. They're capturing 500 million cubic feet. They're not capturing everything, you know, or it wouldn't be bubbling up in water wells. It wouldn't be bubbling up in creeks. It wouldn't be bubbling up in road ditches. That's, that's the problem. You wouldn't have the crop circles out there. NICOR does compensate farmers for the crop death, but one family filed a lawsuit to try and shut the field down. Tonight at 6.30, our Target 3 team investigates the clear and present danger in Livingston County. The hype is high for this year's Illini Hoops team. Why today the excitement has even grown stronger. Also tonight. So we had a lot of people that helped us. Days after being sworn into office, he died. How this councilman's dream is finally coming true. We're going to talk about all of the conditions that uh, led up today's uh, uh, fires, what kind of probably sparked some of them, and uh, the conditions, and how long they're going to be sticking around in this red flag warning when we come back. People are winning for the Viewers Club. Sign up today at viewersclub.net. You know, this scares a lot of people, as it should. Climbing a ladder to clean your clog gutters is not only a messy chore, it's also dangerous. Stay off the ladder and call LeafGuard for the gutter that never clogs, guaranteed. We'll drive our factory on wheels out to your home and custom make your LeafGuard system on site with several color options to choose from. LeafGuard works so well, it's earned the good housekeeping seal 15 years in a row. Only the water goes in, the leaves and debris roll off. And LeafGuard is more affordable than ever. Get LeafGuard for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation on a complete LeafGuard system. You'll receive a free $25 Lowe's gift card with your in-home estimate and gutter inspection. Plus, call during this program and receive a $200 Visa gift card with your LeafGuard purchase. Ask about Refer 8 and find out how you can receive free gutters from LeafGuard. The gutter that never clogs, guaranteed.
When the pandemic had us down, Rodney Davis stood up for us, ensuring American manufacturers and workers could expand production of protective equipment, disinfectants, and other critical life-saving products. Illinois manufacturers are proud of the role that we've played during these challenging times and thank Rodney Davis for protecting our families and frontline workers. Call Congressman Davis and thank him for his leadership during this crisis. American Chemistry Council is responsible for the content of this advertising. Find your style with Patriot Lighting from Menards. Exterior lights enhance the look of your home. All Patriot Lighting outdoor lights are 11% off. Over 120 in stock Sylvania LED bulbs are 11% off. These four packs of True Wave LED bulbs produce a less intense blue light for reduced eye strain. $8.89 after 11% rebate. Stop waiting and start saving with 11% off everything now at Menards. This portion of WCIA3 News is brought to you by Mattex Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Now, Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Kevin Lighty. You know, it's a term that only gets thrown around, uh, you know, a few times uh, a year, but red flag warning. That's basically what the uh, Weather Service uh, issued here uh, for this. And basically what that means is conditions are not good for burning okay you want to prevent any fires getting out of control when it's really windy out there and when it is as dry as it has been so this number I mean, we don't talk about relative humidity a lot but I can tell you this number is usually around 40 maybe 50 percent it's at 23 percent that's really low you've got drought conditions here across much of the area it's been actually really dry we've not had a lot of rainfall over the last few months and so there's even moderate drought out there then you combine that with these winds that are you know 30 look at this still 30 mile an hour wind down around mattoon and there are fires popping up all over the place to keep getting messages from people talking about these fires uh, that are you know just kind of getting sparked now how do these fires start okay well Anybody that's lived in central Illinois long enough knows it can easily be done by somebody throwing out a cigarette butt uh, along the side of the road. Sometimes uh, with the farmers in the fields as well, you know, you just get a little bit of a spark out there. That's been known for a long time. That can occur. You, you really never know many different ways for that. But with the conditions like this, or obviously if anybody's doing any burning, it'll get out of control quick because these winds will just fan the flames and it's hard to really kind of maintain and control that. And these winds are going to die down. But they're still going to be gusty tomorrow, 20, 25 mile an hour winds, but not as bad as 45 like we've seen today. 77 in Champaign, that feels good. Look what happens with our temperatures tonight. We're going to tumble back down into the low 60s after midnight, but we're going all the way down to near 50 by tomorrow morning. So a cool start to the day for sure. Nothing on the satellite radar picture now, but we think tomorrow the front comes through and that's our chance for some rain. So that'll help things out. Throw a little bit of moisture down. It's not a ton, but definitely we're going to see a few showers and then with that, some much cooler temperatures. As a matter of fact, how about the frost freeze forecast? I've got frost that uh, is going to be possible by Thursday night into Friday because we're talking about 30s for overnight lows. And look at these highs here that are going to be struggling with readings only into the 50s. Okay, 50 for tonight. Clouds increase, still breezy for tomorrow. 58 degrees cloudy with a few showers across the area. Don't forget, you can always download the WSA3 weather app. The app is free for you to download, and you can get the hour by hour, the radar, everything you need to know. All right, now let's go and take a look at your seven-day forecast here. There's your showers. There's your much cooler air. There's your 34. And then look at these lows here, 40s, 30s, highs mainly in the 50s, and then maybe a 68 popping up by the time we hit uh, next Wednesday. So, wow, today's 80s, thing of the past. Don't get used to that because it's gone. <laughs> I hope everybody got a chance to be outside and feel it a little bit. Yeah, I think so, except, you know, wow. Uh, for we us, didn't guys, have any, it's not I too didn't bad. Have to worry <laughs> sorry, about. sorry for the ladies. You out. definitely needed a scrunching. Yeah. All right, thanks, Kevin. If the COVID-19 cases continue to climb in Illinois, what that means for the positivity rate over the past week. Plus this. So I just try to compete within my own score. She's battled health issues, even a near-death experience. Now golf is her latest challenge. She's coming out on top there, too. Be a walk star for Make-A-Wish Illinois with WCIA 3. The Walk for Wishes event is going virtual this year. From October 16th through the 25th, we invite you to walk. Registration is free at illinois.wish.org walk. 
When you have computer issues, don't wait weeks to find out what's wrong with it. At Baldwin Bytes, they'll guarantee a diagnosis on your computer in 48 hours or it's free. Bring me your computer. If it isn't diagnosed within 48 hours, the diagnosis is free. I'm deeply concerned about the tax hike amendment. It gives Springfield politicians new power to increase income taxes on anyone. Including middle income families like mine. And hardworking Illinoisans like me. They would even have the power to tax my retirement income. We don't trust Springfield politicians to be fair to taxpayers. Do you? Please stand with family farmers and small businesses and vote no. Please vote no on the tax hike amendment. Feel the difference with Mantex Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Electrical. Take a $25 discount for yourself or pay that $25 forward to cover repairs for a veteran in need. Together, we can feel the difference and make a difference. Visit MatTechService.com to schedule today. You've heard, it's not what you know, but who you know. And it must be good to know Rodney Davis. His special interest donors sure got lots of perks. And while other businesses waited weeks for COVID relief funds, Rodney Davis's brother got a million bucks just 48 hours after he could apply. Then Davis voted to hide the payments from taxpayers. Rodney Davis helps his friends, not you. House Majority PAC is responsible for the content of this advertising. When it comes to medical emergencies, out here, every second counts. Delays can be fatal. So I asked Senator Durbin to help EMTs and firefighters to save our rural communities. He listened and led the fight to pass the SIREN Act, to recruit and train first responders, to buy the equipment we need to save lives. My community counts on me. It's good to know that we can count on Senator Durbin. Dick Durbin, a senator for times like these. I'm Dick Durbin, and I approve this message. Congratulations to our town, Watsika Fall Edition. WCIA3 would like to thank Prairie Commons Business Collective and Illinois Pork Producers. Join us Friday, October 23rd at 6.30 when WCIA3 brings you Our Town Danville Fall Edition. Live from your local news leader, Jennifer Roscoe, Paul Cicchini, Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Kevin Whitey and Brett Barron's on sports. You're watching WCIA 3 News at 6. And when they found out that we wanted to do something for him, they're, without a hesitant, they were supporting us. My son wanted his father's memory to live on, and he couldn't think of a better way than a place where kids could make their own memories. Ed Day was getting sent to be a leader in Gibson City when he suddenly died. And now his family is looking to honor him, hoping to leave a piece of Day in Gibson City forever. WCI3's Gabrielle Cook is with us, so what are they working on? Well, construction just started on a new state park, skate park. The 64-year-old had a long list of what he wanted to do when he became alderman, and this was one of them. His family now has the opportunity to make that dream come true. It's a lot of dirt and a few rails right now, but this place will one day be home to the Ed Day Skate Park. He was elected as alderman in 2017, but died of a heart attack before taking office. One of the things he wanted to make happen was building a skate park. He got the idea when he was renovating a building downtown and saw kids skateboarding on their stairs. We also noticed that, you know, there was no place for kids to ride their skateboards, their bikes, or play with their RC cars. So he had made a list of things, what he wanted to do, and he wanted to build a park for them. And he hadn't got the chance, but it was in his notes on what he wanted to do. After his death, the family decided to start fundraising for the park. They weren't sure they could raise enough money for such a big project, but the community stood behind them. So we had a lot of people that helped us, and the city was generous to give us this property. Gibson City Alderman Susie Tongate says the park will have several uses. Whether they are skateboarding or bicycling, there may be little kids playing and pushing cars and trucks on here if no one else is doing that. But I think it'll be an opportunity for kids to have a safe place to play. Day's family hopes the park will bring the town together. I think the main thing is just getting people outside and to bond and meet people. The family raised $180,000 for the project, and they're planning to finish it in a few weeks. Jennifer, back Almost to you. $200,000. That's incredible.
Shows you how much he was loved. All right, thank you. Brett, we've been so focused on football, it's easy to forget that we are closing in on Illini basketball season. Yes, too. and while there's a lot of excitement for football, I think Illini Nation is really excited for basketball more than that. And we will hear from Brad Underwood after the break as his team takes the floor for the first time. He weighs in on COVID-19 and how it's impacted his Illini. Next. WCIA 3 News is sponsored by Classic Granite and Marble. The Viewers Club is on the news at 9 on X49. Don't miss your chance to win $100 with your Viewers Club card. Watch the news at 9 on X49 to win. I'm deeply concerned about the tax hike amendment. They claim they're only going to increase taxes on the rich. But if their out-of-control spending tells us anything, they'll be back for more. I don't trust Springfield politicians to be fair to taxpayers. Do you? When the pandemic had us down, Rodney Davis stood up for us, ensuring American manufacturers and workers could expand production of protective equipment, disinfectants, and other critical life-saving products. Illinois manufacturers are proud of the role that we've played during these challenging times and thank Rodney Davis for protecting our families and frontline workers. Call Congressman Davis and thank him for his leadership during this crisis. American Chemistry Council is responsible for the content of this advertising. Earn your degree or train for a new career. Parkland College classes get you back to work faster. Save big on tuition with transferable credits. Make your next move Parkland College. Register now at parkland.edu. We've taken steps to slow the spread of COVID-19, but no matter where you live, it's vital to take personal responsibility. Free testing is available at Marketplace Mall. No appointment or doctor's referral needed. It's the responsible thing to do. See uphd.org. I'm Betsy Dirksen Londrigan, and I approve this message. Scandals and special favors. Rodney Davis, another Illinois politician out for himself. The ComEd scandal. Davis took $64,000 from the CEO, executives, and PAC of a company that admitted bribery to keep rates high. The PPP loan debacle. Davis's family got to the front of the line for a million-dollar payout, and he voted to keep it secret. While businesses and families suffered. Rodney Davis. He wins. We lose. The politicians claim their tax hike amendment won't hurt most families, but that's false. If this passes, there are no restrictions. It's like writing the government a blank check. And I don't believe it's going to stop with the rich. I believe it's going to hit the middle class. Please vote no. From the official television station of Illini Sports, this is WCIA 3 Sports and your Illini Nation. The first day of the college basketball season is here. The Illini officially practiced for the first time this morning. And while there are some highly touted new faces this year for the Illini, it's these two guys, Ayo Desumu and Kofi Coburn, both back and ready to make some noise nationally as the Illini try and get back to the NCAA tournament. COVID-19 ended last season at the Big Ten tournament, and it's presented plenty of challenges for the Illini since then. Head coach Brad Underwood says he's had guys out due to, quote, issues at various points since returning to campus, but then out fourth year head coach says he's elected not to stop the program due to positive cases myocarditis testing and quarantines to, to think we're not going to have cases is would be pretty foolish on my part i think i think we all understand in in, in college sports now that people are going to be out and, and we're going to miss time but uh but we've dealt with it and we've de dealt with it in an unbelievable way Illinois not releasing COVID-19 numbers. Underwood added his team is healthy now. The high school golf season officially ends this week at sectionals after the IHSA canceled state due to COVID-19. Armstrong Potomac senior Anna Duden has been playing her best golf yet. And as WCIA3's Marley Weirder reports, it's been a journey in a lifetime in the making. Anna Duden doesn't have any teammates, but her coach definitely makes up for it. We uh, think the same. So we're both really competitive, so we know what we're thinking before we even do it. As the only golfer for Armstrong Potomac, Anna is coached by her dad, Gary. They're taking advantage of their final season together as a father-daughter duo for the Trojans. She just makes it so fun. I mean, who wouldn't want to be able to golf with their daughter and coach her? Uh, thank the Lord every morning that we have this opportunity because she was very sick when she was younger. At just 10 days old, Anna's heart stopped beating for 19 minutes. As a result, she spent the next seven weeks in the hospital battling a number of health conditions and was later diagnosed with cerebral palsy. 
obviously very scary situation and we were you know just really unsure as to what was going on and everyone has challenges that you face her challenge just happens to be something that most people can recognize and can see but Anna has never let that get in the way of her life or her love for golf. And this season, she's playing her best game yet. The senior recently shot a career best 41 in a nine hole match. You want your kids to love what they're doing and, and have some success at it after all the work. And so it's been a blessing for her and in turn, just a huge blessing for us. I'm expecting her to do well every time I treat her as an athlete that happens to be my daughter, and we are very competitive. We hate losing. So I just try to compete within my own scores and what I can do. Um, I know what I can accomplish. Next on her list of goals is getting to play at the next level. Right now she has interest from DAC and Eastern Illinois' walk-on program. It would be really awesome just to get to play new courses, meet new people, um, just advance in my golf game. And with a competitive spirit like hers, there are truly no limits. Reporting for WCI3 Sports, I'm Marley Weirda. Marley, thanks. Love to see her determination that she's out there. She's not letting it stop her. She's really good, too. And I've been out on the golf course with them and the love between them, but also the intensity of that father-daughter yeah. duo. It's, they're awesome. Play tomorrow with sessions. All right, thanks. The Supreme Court has made another change what they ruled when it comes to getting your census filled out. Plus, a former state inspector blows the whistle on an active gas leak. It's actually leaving the storage formation through fractures and migrating up to the, to the surface. Target 3 went to investigate evidence of a clear and present danger threatening crops, water, and the skies above a massive natural gas storage facility. You won't believe what they found. Sports on WCIA3 is brought to you by PNP Heating and Cooling. The finances in Illinois are a mess. In my part of the state, cities and schools are strapped for money. If the fair tax doesn't pass and the millionaires and billionaires aren't forced to pay their fair share, they're going to come for more money from me. I pay all I can afford to pay now. It's time they step up and pay their fair share. If I were a billionaire from Chicago, I would be against a fair tax proposal. I get it. But for 97% of us in Illinois, it's going to be a tax cut. And that's why I'm for it. News reports revealed the FBI raided the home of Betsy Londrigan's donor, a former lieutenant in Madigan's machine. She didn't learn her lesson. Instead, she doubled down. With the feds circling in on Mike Madigan, Londrigan established a joint pack with a Madigan-controlled political organization. She just can't help herself. Betsy Londrigan is all about the money. She'll never work for you. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. Hey, Dutch boy, show me mocha red. Okay. Does it have a smooth, durable finish? Yes, and it's 50% more stain resistant. Mm, still talking to Dutch boy? Dutch boy, show me sleepy purple. Okay. Oh, would you look at that. That's better. He'll still help us paint, right? With Dutch Boy's quality paint and Menards expert service, you can twist off to something great. Right now at Menards, get 11% off everything, including Dutch boy paint. Do your gutters look like this every time it rains? If so, you're not alone. Rain would literally pour through the back of the gutter. The leaves were in them and they were running down the side of the house. And it was going into my walls and in my floors. That's why homeowners are making the switch to LeafGuard, the only patented one-piece seamless system with a clog-free guarantee. LeafGuard was definitely a great investment for our home. My new gutters are fantastic. And they guaranteed a clog-free system. Take advantage of great savings when you get LeafGuard. For only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation on a complete LeafGuard system. Plus, call in now for a free $25 Lowe's gift card with your in-home estimate and gutter inspection. And when you call during this program today, receive a $200 Visa gift card with your LeafGuard purchase. Call LeafGuard for the lowest price on a one-piece covered system. The home office has taken on a new meaning. Let's update. Everything Amish handcrafted for the home. If you can envision it, we can build it. Learn more at prairiecommonscollective.com. 
All right, we're still getting pictures of uh, additional fires. We take you to Edgar County here. Take a look at this field fire is between Chrisman and Paris. You can see that picture there. A bad situation there that is uh, ongoing. And again, several of these fires popping up across the air. You can post your pictures on our Facebook page or email us or via the news or weather app. All righty, looking for a bright spot to your day. We've got one from Springfield. Joe sent us this is sunset from last night. It was taken at the Thomas Reese Memorial Carillon at the Botanical Gardens in Springfield. And as the sun came up this morning, we're going to go from night to day. Rhonda got the snapshot of the sunrise in Mattoon. Definitely a bright spot as well as a warm one. Like Kevin said, probably our last warm one. We want to see your pictures and videos. Email us, send them on Facebook. We have a post on our page for you to share what you're seeing. It's a time when many are rolling up a sleeve to get a flu shot where veterans can go to get one for free. Plus, the holiday buildup is going to be a lot different how you can get into the spirit virtually this year. You've heard, it's not what you know, but who you know. And it must be good to know Rodney Davis. His special interest donors sure got lots of perks. And while other businesses waited weeks for COVID relief funds, Rodney Davis's brother got a million bucks just 48 hours after he could apply. Then Davis voted to hide the payments from taxpayers. Rodney Davis helps his friends, not you. House Majority PAC is responsible for the content of this advertising. I'm a Democrat. And I'm a Republican. These days, we don't see eye to eye on much. But one thing we do agree on is we don't like to pay taxes, especially when the wealthy aren't paying their fair share. And that's why we both support the fair tax. Under the fair tax, millionaires and billionaires will be forced to pay more. And 97% of us will get a tax cut. When was the last time you heard of something like that? Getting a tax cut, making the wealthy pay more? That's even something we can agree on. <laughs> Draperies and Interiors by Design, your local Hunter Douglas dealer. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6.30. Time to take a look at the top local stories of the day. A 58-year-old man from Muhammad died after he was hit by a semi-truck while riding his bike on Route 150. Dr. Bill Shu died last night. He was biking with his wife and daughter Sunday when he was hit. Police are still looking for the semi-driver who hit him. Anthony Myers was given 30 years in prison for the death of two-year-old Tanaja Barnes. She was found in her Decatur home wrapped in a urine-soaked blanket, barely alive. Myers was the live-in boyfriend of Barnes' mother, Twanika Davis. She is serving 20 years for her daughter's death. High winds and dry crops have resulted in field fires across central Illinois. Firefighters in several communities battled those fires this afternoon. A red flag warning has been in effect today. In a Target 3 investigation, signs of an ongoing gas leak killing crops, polluting air and water. Despite a legal battle between a small town farm family and a large gas company, experts tell us nothing is being done to stop it. WCI3's Mark Maxwell investigates the clear and present danger in Livingston County. This is one of eight underground natural gas storage facilities NICOR maintains in Illinois. I was surprised that natural gas was kept in this fashion. In the early 1960s, Illinois granted NICOR two permits to bury gas out of sight deep underground in naturally occurring aquifers in Ancona and nearby Garfield. Later, despite geological studies warning a fissure in the capstone could cause a leak, NICOR still merged those two fields into one massive storage facility. Attorney Ruth Robinson represents the Solomon family farm that sits on top of the gas field. The um, gas seemed to be migrating out of the, um, the underground storage where it was supposed to stay. Jim Stevens inspected wells on gas storage fields for the Illinois Department of Natural Resources for decades. You cannot know with 100% certainty what is three feet, 3,000 feet below ground. Right. How do you inspect that? You don't. You don't. He visited the Ancona Garfield site several times and raised concerns. What are we looking at? That's a hand dug water well on property that is now owned by NICOR that is sitting there bubbling because of the natural gas inside the water vein. This well is 35 foot deep. They're supposed to be storing at 2,500, 2,800 feet. So it's actually leaving the storage formation through fractures and migrating up to the, to the surface. 
That's the very reason why the Solomon family filed a lawsuit against NICOR in 2015 to try and shut the storage facility down. They don't want this gas bubbling up onto their property. That lawsuit failed. NICOR appealed. The court kicked the case down to the Illinois Commerce Commission, where it languished, and the Solomon family started running low on money. Methane gas is not hazardous to your health other than as an explosive hazard or as an inhalation hazard. There's houses in Kansas blowing up because of natural gas leaking into houses. NICOR's website has instructions for how to spot a gas leak. One, look for discolored vegetation, blowing dirt, or continued bubbling water. Listen for a hissing sound and smell for the distinctive rotten egg odor of natural gas. When we went to the Solomon family farm to investigate, it didn't take long to find all three. And watch what happens when we put this gas detector near this hole. There is no doubt in my mind there is something coming from out of this hole right now, something cool, something that smells terrible, and something that sets this gas detector off. We're gonna see if we can detect any leaking gas coming from the bottom of this pipe. That's a positive test for leaking gas. Now, listen carefully to see if you can hear the bubbling beneath. It shouldn't even be there. The vent pipe? Yeah. There shouldn't be gas coming to surface like that. NICOR's massive underground natural gas storage facility is supposed to house the gas hundreds of feet below the surface here. But somehow, evident by this crop death, enough of it is reaching the soil to kill the crops here and scar the cornfields for miles around. There's one conclusion that the, the cap rock, is the lid, is not working. And, um, but then nobody does anything about it. Year after year, it's getting um, worse. You know, there's more and more crop damage. Decades of, of, of gas just going up into the atmosphere. Um, and there's nothing being done about that. NICOR tells us in a statement, quote, a small amount of gas migrates from the storage zone to a shallower zone through natural geological features or conditions that existed prior to the construction of that storage facility in the 1960s. It says it has systems in place to prevent natural gas from getting up into the atmosphere. Quote, we have installed secondary collection wells that capture the gas in the shallower formations, recompress it, and inject it back into our transmission system. Target 3 reporter Lindsay Jones joins me now. She's point, uh, poured through thousands of documents that date back decades. Lindsay, court documents show that at times NICOR has pointed to the existence of biogenic gas or natural gas to maybe suggest that perhaps some of this gas isn't all theirs. Yeah, in fact, NICOR included that note in their response to us, but expert analysts have sampled and tested this gas numerous times over the years, and they found a chemical fingerprint that confirms it is, in fact, NICOR's gas and not naturally occurring drift gas. And the company says that amount of gas is small. Those are their words, but we still don't exactly know what the volume is, how much might be escaping into the atmosphere. That's still the biggest mystery here. NICOR knew that geological crack or split existed in the early 60s. They still stored the gas there and expanded the storage field while downplaying the risk of a leak. Initially, state law required them to report any gas leak immediately, but then the Illinois Commerce Commission says it dropped that requirement in the 1980s. So we zeroed in on the source of the leak, but how much is leaking? NICOR still claims it reports that data back to the state. But several months into this investigation, several public records request in, we still have not found any state documents yet that would tell us exactly how much methane is escaping that field. Jennifer? Thank you. Now there is much more of this story on WCIA.com. Much more to come. A whistleblower sounded alarms about high levels of a cancer-causing chemical at NICOR's oldest gas storage facility. He no longer has his job. But our Target 3 team followed up and investigate what's in the water in our second story in the series, Clear and Present Danger. In other news, cases of coronavirus continue to surge in Illinois. The state's seven-day positivity rate rose from 4.5% to 4.6%. It's the eighth straight day the rolling positivity rate has increased. There are more than 2,800 new cases across the state. There have been more than 327,000 infections diagnosed in Illinois since the pandemic began. 
49 more people have died in the last 24 hours. The state has lost more than 9,000 people to COVID-related deaths. The Veterans Administration and other groups in the Champaign-Urbana area are teaming up for a free drive through clinic for veterans. The clinic opened at 10 this morning and went until 2 at VFW Post 630 in Urbana. Any veteran registered with the VA healthcare system could go. You can also get registered right on the spot if you go to the drive through clinic. It just saves them the time and the travel, and um, this is safer probably than being in, inside of a, a building, and it's just more convenient to the, the veterans. If you didn't make it today, you'll have another chance. October 28th, veterans can find other locations across central Illinois for free flu shots on our website, WCIA.com. The Polar Express makes its run every holiday season. Why the train isn't leaving the station this year. Plus, today was the day to get out and get some things done. Kevin's back to let us know if it's the last really warm day we're going to have for a while. WCIA 3 News is sponsored by Cabinet City Showroom, Tilton and Urbana. I'm deeply concerned about the tax hike amendment. They claim they're only going to increase taxes on the rich, but if they're out of control spending tells us anything, they'll be back for more. I don't trust Springfield politicians to be fair to taxpayers. Do you? The Champaign County Forest Preserves offer something for everyone, from fishing to hiking to golf, or my favorite, stargazing. But we need your help to keep going. We owe it to our children and grandchildren to protect and preserve Champaign County's natural heritage. The billionaires are spending a fortune to try and scare us. They want to keep getting away without paying their fair share. I did my research and here are the facts. The fair tax will not tax retirement income. You heard that right. The fair tax will not tax retirement income. As a matter of fact, 97% of Illinoisans will get a tax cut, including seniors like me. It's time for change. Vote yes for fairness. When the pandemic had us down, Rodney Davis stood up for us, ensuring American manufacturers and workers could expand production of protective equipment, disinfectants, and other critical life-saving products. Illinois manufacturers are proud of the role that we've played during these challenging times and thank Rodney Davis for protecting our families and frontline workers. Call Congressman Davis and thank him for his leadership during this crisis. American Chemistry Council is responsible for the content of this advertising. The politicians claim their tax hike amendment won't hurt most families, but that's false. If this passes, there are no restrictions. It's like writing the government a blank check. And I don't believe it's going to stop with the rich. I believe it's going to hit the middle class. Please vote no. Today on The Morning Show, a live report about a kitchen fire at a mobile home in Urbana. And tomorrow, Leah Bodine joins us for 3 Minute Grill. And we've got a cold front coming through in the morning, which will give us a chance for some rain showers. We'll talk about it on Weather on the Threes. WCIA 3 News is sponsored by Cabinet City Showroom, Tilton and Urbana. Now, Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Kevin Leidy. All right, this red flag warning still in effect. Essentially, please don't do any burning out there tonight. Uh, we've got just the perfect conditions uh, to cause these fires to get out of control, and there have been dozens across the area. As a matter of fact, uh, I want to take a look at uh, some video of one of those, and this was in uh, taken from North Champaign, and you can see the fire. Look at the smoke uh, billowing up here. Uh, just tons of smoke from these fires, and you can see it along many of the interstates there as well. That's just one of many. We saw Jalon over in Edgar County early. We've heard other ones uh, down to parts of Douglas County, and they're really all over the place, and a lot of it because of, well, a few factors. You've got really low humidity in the low 20s. We were in the teens early. You've got drought conditions here, moderate drought showing up, and then also you've got these strong winds that are still gusting to 39 miles an hour in Mattoon, 36 in Decatur, and we're going to keep those winds around. Now, there will be a just a slight weakening in that, but I still think tomorrow we're in that 20 to 25 mile per hour range with the winds. They're just going to come out of the other direction and from the northwest. Now, that is actually going to help us out a little bit because it's going to bring in a front and a little bit of rain, so that should dampen things just a little bit more for us. It's warm, though. It was amazing into the 80s today. You don't get that in mid-October too often, but we'll take it. But watch what happens as the front comes through tonight. We're back down to the low 60s at 2 o'clock in the morning, but by morning, I actually think some areas could be into the lower 50s. 
to start things out. Some pretty chilly stuff here um, as the front kind of comes through. Again, you can see here, you're looking at the satellite and radar picture. We're all clear, but that front gets in tomorrow and it brings us a little bit of rain. A few showers throughout the day on Thursday will be possible. I think more than anything, what you're going to notice is the temperature just drop it off and especially Thursday night. This is our frost freeze forecast. Uh, here's your little uh, icicles here. Um, you can see Thursday night. That's when frost is likely because we're forecasting down around maybe 33 or 34 degrees and uh, probably unlikely uh, to get anything after that as temperatures get back to the upper 30s and the, and the lower 40s for overnight lows. But look at your highs. Your warmest high now is 63 degrees there over the next six days or so. All right, 54 tonight. Clouds on the increase, still a little breezy out there. 58 tomorrow. I still think we're going to have some of those showers around, so keep that in mind. And uh, don't forget, you can always download the WCI3 weather app. It's got the very latest on there, ready to rock and roll for you with, uh, well, you got the hour by hour and our radar app is up there as well. All of our stories, that is free for you. And you can also see the uh, seven day forecast, which looks like this on the app. Showers Thursday. And then look at that 34. As I mentioned, you've only got that, you know, one chance there where it's going to really maybe be a little frosty because then you're talking 38, 44, 39, 43. And again, towards the weekend, a few showers, maybe late Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. But these 80s that we had today, that's a thing of the past. Nothing like that anytime soon. But it was nice today. I mean, listen, it was windy. I, when I was out there getting video of uh, some of those fires, I mean, I, uh, I had my sunglasses, and even, even the wind took my sunglasses right off me, and then they went flying. I had to go chase after my sunglasses, of all things. I felt we kept getting emails and calls, and one right after another. Oh, there's a fire here, there's a fire yep. there, all over the place. Yeah, and uh, we're still getting them out there, we're still getting reports of those fires. So red flag warning still in effect here tonight. All right, thank you. Have you filled out your census form? Why you now have a lot less time to get it done than you thought you did. Pittsburgh Paints and Stains. The perfect paint for when the nursery becomes the bedroom. That becomes his room. That becomes your favorite room in the house. Paint because you want to, not because you have to. For results that stand up to whatever life brings. Trust Pittsburgh Paints and Stains, exclusively at Menards. Get 11% off everything, including Pittsburgh Paramount Paint. Discover the majestic look and feel of the mountains at Classic Granite and Marble. Be inspired by our selection of marble, granite, and quartz at our showroom in Champaign. Schedule your design consultation today at Classic Granite and Marble. The finances in Illinois are a mess. In my part of the state, cities and schools are strapped for money. If the fair tax doesn't pass and the millionaires and billionaires aren't forced to pay their fair share, they're going to come for more money from me. I pay all I can afford to pay now. It's time they step up and pay their fair share. If I were a billionaire from Chicago, I would be against a fair tax proposal. I get it. But for 97% of us in Illinois, it's going to be a tax cut. And that's why I'm for it. News reports revealed the FBI raided the home of Betsy Londrigan's donor, a former lieutenant in Madigan's machine. She didn't learn her lesson. Instead, she doubled down. With the feds circling in on Mike Madigan, Londrigan established a joint pack with a Madigan-controlled political organization. She just can't help herself. Betsy Londrigan is all about the money. She'll never work for you. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. Did you know that the wrong fitting bra can cause shoulder and back pain? At Confidential Yours, you get a custom fitting. No more guessing size or style by shopping online. Experience the life-changing comfort a correct fitting bra can do for you at Confidentially Yours. The role of a journalist is to report about what our government is doing. The Supreme Court is at the center of a monumental battle. I feel an incredible responsibility. This is the moment. We have to make sure that we're right, that we're fair. The president said he wants this done before Election Day. Can it be done? And bring Americans a greater understanding, but also hopefully bring Americans closer together. That's why I wanted to become a journalist. This is the moment. Tonight on News Nation, how states like Wisconsin are responding to increased COVID cases. Plus, a son hospitalized with cancer, a father who couldn't be with him because of the pandemic. How that dad found a unique way to connect. Oh, it makes me feel 
Tonight on News Nation, starting at 8, 7 Central on WGN America. The news continues here on WCIA 3, your local news leader. The deadline for the census is tomorrow. The Supreme Court struck down the previous extension that set the deadline at the end of October. Now, cities and towns are scrambling to get as many people counted as possible. WCIA 3's Cole Henke has more. The deadline for the 2020 census has moved three times already this year. After the Supreme Court's ruling to uphold President Trump's September 30th deadline, city officials like John Kinseth figured out they only have one day left to get the count right. But it's hard to plan uh, 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 with a, uh, a moving time frame all the time. Governor Pritzker called the U.S. Supreme Court's decision disappointing. His office was fully committed to that October 31st deadline going so far as to give another million dollars to census efforts across the state just hours before that decision came down. In normal times, the census is a monumental undertaking, and the pandemic has brought countless new challenges. The consequences of this decision will reverberate for at least the next 10 years. For Decatur, those consequences could include the loss of over $1 million of funding every year. But, you know, every person, you know, is, is $1,500 potentially uh, that, that brings resources to our community. Um, and so we can't afford to lose one if we, if we don't have to. There are still about 330 households left to count in Decatur. And Kinseth believes that could result in about $1.2 million of extra funding. And with those numbers being used for the next decade, it could result in around $12 million of lost revenue for the city. But for the people working on the count, the impact is being felt now. And, and so certainly uh, that, that adds to the, the, the frustration, uh, um, you know, uh, certainly not just for the city, but, you know, for the people that are employed working towards this effort. Reporting in Decatur, I'm Cole Hankey, WCI3, your local news leader. Justice Sonia Sotomayor was the only justice to write a dissent for the decision. She said the harms caused by rushing this year's census count are irreparable. We are just two months away from the holiday season. But things are going to look a lot different this year. We'll tell you about it right now. WCIA 3 News is brought to you by Asgro DeKalb Seed. Your news every hour in primetime is on News Nation on WGN America. News Nation was live in Louisville after the release of the grand jury recordings. And we had an exclusive interview with Dr. Deborah Burks on how she says children could safely return to school. The virus comes in from the community. News Nation covers your nation every night starting at 8, 7 central on WGN America. Go to WGNAmerica.com to find WGN America on your cable or satellite provider. That's a buffalo flatbread bullseye for my mouth to aim at. Oh, hiding, huh? The new grilled buffalo chicken papadilla. Tangy buffalo sauce grilled chicken and melty cheese for just six bucks. Papa John's. I'm Betsy Dirksen Londrigan, and I approve this message. Scandals and special favors. Rodney Davis, another Illinois politician out for himself. The ComEd scandal. Davis took $64,000 from the CEO, executives, and PAC of a company that admitted bribery to keep rates high. The PPP loan debacle. Davis's family got to the front of the line for a million-dollar payout, and he voted to keep it secret. While businesses and families suffered. Rodney Davis. He wins. We lose. A new Illinois health insurance law that took effect in January might allow you to get free hearing aids through your insurance provider. Contact me today to find out how I might be able to get you free hearing aids. You've heard, it's not what you know, but who you know. And it must be good to know Rodney Davis. His special interest donors sure got lots of perks. And while other businesses waited weeks for COVID relief funds, Rodney Davis's brother got a million bucks just 48 hours after he could apply. Then Davis voted to hide the payments from taxpayers. Rodney Davis helps his friends, not you. House Majority Pack is responsible for the content of this advertising. That's not bacon. It's sausage. Whoa. Behold, Johnsonville Sausage Strips. Sausage that looks and cooks like bacon. It's a meaty miracle. Find them in the bacon section, even though they're sausage. Be a part of WCIA3's Judy Fraser Woolly Worm Forecast. Email your Woolly Worm photos to CIA.
CI Living at WCIA.com or post them to CI Living's Facebook page. Then tune in to WCIA 3 Judy Fraser's Woolly Worm Forecast, Thursday at 4 p.m. on CI Living. This is WCIA 3 News, your local news leader. COVID's once again changing a holiday tradition, this time the Gibson City Christmas Parade. City officials say they were originally going to cancel the event, but they felt it was important to bring the community together. So they are planning on a drive through style parade. It's going to be known as Christmas in the Park. They hope to have a Christmas setting at North Park around December 10th. A family favorite event is being put on pause this winter. The Monticello Railroad Museum is canceling the Polar Express. President George Roadcap says they only have half the volunteers. It takes 72 people to make this happen. The museum will use the downtime to work on restoring the trains. They do plan on holding throttle time for $150. You can be an engineer for a day. Throttle never heard of that. Nor have I. All right. Well, an unseasonably warm and almost hot, windy day in central Illinois. But things are about to change. Kevin's back one more time to fill us in on what's ahead. WCIA 3 News is sponsored by Oakwood Restoration and Blasting Services. In times like these, communication is more important than ever. Right now, that's easier with a cell phone amplifier or other device from iTech. At iTech, we're making sure you get what you need now to stay connected. Learn more at iTechTTY.org. What if a place existed where education was truly embraced? In Amazing Arcola, Illinois, our community is steeped with support and diversity. A small town enriched with growth and opportunity. Amazing Arcola, Illinois. See the good. With people worried about crime, we need Dan Wright as state's attorney. Dan Wright's a proven, tough prosecutor committed to protecting families. That's why Wright's working with police and prosecutors, keeping neighborhoods safe. As state's attorney, Wright's put violent criminals behind bars. Wright's fighting sexual and physical abuse in schools and human trafficking. And Wright helped victims find the justice they deserve. Dan Wright for state's attorney. What we need in tough times. I'm deeply concerned about the tax hike amendment. It gives Springfield politicians new power to increase income taxes on anyone, including middle income families like mine and hardworking Illinoisans like me. They would even have the power to tax my retirement income. We don't trust Springfield politicians to be fair to taxpayers. Do you? Please stand with family farmers and small businesses and vote no. Please vote no on the tax hike amendment. When the pandemic had us down, Rodney Davis stood up for us, ensuring American manufacturers and workers could expand production of protective equipment, disinfectants, and other critical life-saving products. Illinois manufacturers are proud of the role that we've played during these challenging times and thank Rodney Davis for protecting our families and frontline workers. Call Congressman Davis and thank him for his leadership during this crisis. American Chemistry Council is responsible for the content of this advertising. The attacks on Rodney are just ridiculous. I am someone with a pre-existing condition and will have that for the rest of my life. The genetic form of cancer that I have can affect our children. They have that chance to have the same type of cancer that I do. Rodney, his ultimate goal is just to make sure that everybody has the health care that they want and the choices and the options that they choose. Rodney's willing to work across party lines to fight for better health care for all of us. It's personal to us. I'm Rodney Davis and I approve this message. Be a part of WCIA 3's Judy Fraser Woolly Worm Forecast. Email your Woolly Worm photos to CI Living at WCIA.com or post them to CI Living's Facebook page. Then tune in to WCIA 3 Judy Fraser's Woolly Worm Forecast, Thursday at 4 p.m. on CI Living. $35 million is a lot of money for a school renovation. And coming up tonight at 10, one school district is giving an inside look into how it's being spent. Tons of videos uh, and pictures coming into us here. I want to share some of them for you of these field fires. Take a look at this. This was on 105 between Decatur and Cerro Gordo um, about an hour ago. And you can see one of the field fires uh, right there. Here's another one. Take a look at this picture. This is right outside of Clinton. Look at that fire in the field. And then here's another one outside of Sydney. Uh, where they're out there trying to battle some of these fires. So again, it is an ongoing situation in many locations, not just 
you know, in Champaign, like we've seen earlier. You can see on the seven-day forecast here, temperature is going to be uh, tumbling. At least the fire danger starts to go down a little bit over the next 12 to 24 hours. And I'm trying to quickly find it. I know somebody, who was it? Sean, Sean, thank you for emailing us. I also want to say fire in Effingham today. So like you said, all over the place. All over the place, yep. All right, thanks, Kevin. All right, more news tonight at 9 and 10. We'll see you then. Good night.